Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to look at an A-level chemistry titration question. Details are in the description. A back titration technique is used to calculate the value of X in a sample of hydrated sodium carbonate. This is quite a long question. It is worth seven marks and is one of the more difficult titration questions that I've seen on an A-level paper. Let's get started. A student added 627 milligrams of hydrated sodium carbonate to 200 centimeters cubed of 0.250 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid in a beaker and stirred the mixture. After the reaction was complete, the resulting solution was transferred to a volumetric flask made up to 250 centimeters cubed with deionized water and mixed thoroughly. Several 25.0 centimeter cubed portions of the resulting solution were titrated with 0.150 mole per decimeter cubed aqueous sodium hydroxide. The mean titer was 26.60 cm3 of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Calculate the value of X in Na2CO3.xH2O. Show your working, give your value as an integer. There is a lot going on in this question. Balancing equations, acid reactions, a titration with dilution, excess and limiting factor, it's a back titration, and water crystallization. First of all, let's think about why a back titration might be used. Some substances are not soluble enough in water to create solutions of the required concentration. A really clear change from colourless to pink is seen at the end points of the reaction between sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid when just one drop of sodium hydroxide is in excess. It's a really good idea to draw a diagram, especially with longer questions. This is sometimes referred to as a storyboard. The storyboard helps to visualize the location of each substance throughout the analysis. In the first step, an excess of hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium carbonate in a beaker. This beaker now contains hydrochloric acid. The solution in the beaker is transferred to a volumetric flask and diluted to a total volume of 250 centimeters cubed. Finally, 25 cm3 portions of the hydrochloric acid solution are titrated with sodium hydroxide. Acid plus carbonate gives salts plus carbon dioxide plus water. The first reaction that occurs in the beaker is shown there between the hydrochloric acid and the sodium carbonate. Acid plus alkali gives salt plus water. Hydrochloric acid is present in the conical flask. Sodium hydroxide is delivered from the burette. The second balance equation shows this reaction. The amount of sodium hydroxide delivered from the burette can be calculated using amount is equal to concentration multiplied by volume. This is equal to 3.99 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. We can see from the balanced equation that the reaction between hydrochloric acid and NaOH is a 1 to 1 reaction. The amount of hydrochloric acid present in the conical flask at the beginning of the titration is also equal to 3.99 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. 25 centimeters cubed of the hydrochloric acid was used in each titration. The original solution of hydrochloric acid was 250 centimeters cubed, so the amount of hydrochloric acid present in the original 250 centimeter cubed volumetric flask is equal to 3.99 times 10 to the minus 2 moles. An excess of hydrochloric acid was added to sodium carbonate in a beaker. 3.99 times 10 to the minus 2 moles is the amount of hydrochloric acid left in the beaker after the reaction with Na2CO3. The amount of hydrochloric acid added to the beaker can be worked out using amount is equal to concentration multiplied by volume. This works out to be 0 0.0500 moles. The difference between these two amounts is the amount of hydrochloric acid that reacted with the sodium carbonate. The amount of hydrochloric acid that reacts works out to be 0 0.0101 moles. If we take a look at the balanced equation, hydrochloric acid reacts with sodium carbonate in a 2 to 1 reaction. The amount of sodium carbonate present at the beginning of the analysis is equal to the amount of hydrochloric acid divided by 2. This works out to be 5.05 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. 
the amount of the hydrated sodium carbonate present at the beginning of the reaction is also 5.05 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. The molar mass of the hydrated sodium carbonate can be found using molar mass is equal to mass divided by amount. The mass of the hydrated sodium carbonate is given in the question, 627 milligrams. Convert to grams by divided by 1000. The molar mass of the hydrated sodium carbonate works out to be 124.2 grams per mole. The molar mass of anhydrous sodium carbonate can be found using the relative atomic masses on the data sheet. This works out to be 106.0 grams per mole. The molar mass of water can be found in the same way. The difference between the molar mass of the hydrated sodium carbonate and anhydrous sodium carbonate is due to the presence of water of crystallization. A difference of 18 grams per mole suggests one water of crystallization, 36 grams per mole, two water crystallization, 54 grams per mole, three water crystallization, and so on. We can see that the difference between the molar masses of the anhydrous and the hydrated is approximately 18, so given as an integer, the value of x is equal to 1. Thanks for watching, I hope you found the video useful. Please post in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Take care and good luck with your studies.